Welcome back, Devils fans, and the New Jersey Devils have dropped a painful one at home, losing tonight to the Nashville Predators by a score of 3-2 to two in the shootout, and lots of things to get to in this game. Um, first, we start off the day, and maybe it came out last night, but I think I saw it at some point earlier today, that Curtis Lazar is done for the year. Such a shame to see. Curtis has emerged as one of my favorite players on the team this year. I think he's a heart and soul guy, block shots, willing to fight, as we saw in that Rangers melee. And he actually was, in my opinion, the guy that kind of poured the gasoline on it and escalated it from just the Rempy McDermott to a full five-on-five -five brawl when he attacked Jimmy VC. And he had a, he was having a, he had a career year this year. Seven goals, 18 assists for 25 points, a plus 10, a career high for him. And he's one of those, you know, heart and soul type guys, love laser. It's a shame that his year has come to an end. So we go into battle without laser tonight. We have some call-ups, Bowers, Hallinan in the lineup. And uh, before we get to the game, please subscribe if you have not already hit the button it's free it takes two seconds also with the like please just hit that like button it takes two seconds like that thank you thank you very much for watching the videos and on to the game action we go to the first period we're at 149 luke hughes gets the puck kind of in center ice area gets the jack on the wing he comes flying in with speed and wrists it past sorrows to give the devils the one nothing lead at 149 luke registers his 45th point with the assist breaking will butcher's Rookie defenseman record for the Devils, and Luke is now on a seven-game point streak. So congrats to Luke for that. Sets the record. He's on a seven-game point streak. Love to see that. Devils with the one nothing lead early. Later on in the period, Hallinan throws a monster hit near the bench. Love to see the physicality. It looks like Hallinan's one of those type of guys that's going to throw the weight around a little bit. Love to see that. We obviously haven't seen a ton of that on this season from this devil's club hallinan laying the wood the lead was short-lived at 8 39 roman yossi gets an absolute ripper from the point hits kakinen and trickles in to tie the game at one at 8 39 and it seemed like kakinen got hit in the cack i don't know what it was i don't know if we're gonna find out but it was a laser hit him right in that area i think kakinen took one to the kakinen it trickles in Game tied at one. Kakinen laboring on the ice for a little bit. The trainer comes out. He eventually exits the game. And Jake the Snake Allen enters the game after after playing last night. So it looks he's going to be playing most, most of the game at this point. Returns in the net. Makes a couple saves early. And then makes an absolutely beautiful glove save late in the period. First period ends at 1-1. And we head to the second. On the power play, Luke Hughes breaks his stick on a shot, leading in an odd man rush the other way. Luckily, the Preds did not score on it, but Luke Hughes must look into new sticks immediately. Um, obviously, we all know he had a broken stick in that Ranger game, which led to a, uh, an actual goal the other way by Capo Caco. And so, Luke, I don't know what your Bauer sticks are exploding, but maybe we got to figure it out. Maybe you got a defective batch, but that was almost the second goal against the Devils because of the sticks blowing up. So I think we definitely have to look into that. With a little under two minutes left, Jake Allen makes a huge save on Novak, getting the leg out, kicking it out. Beautiful save. Novak obviously didn't get everything he wanted to on the shot, but he did get it, you know, going into the net. And Allen comes up with the big save there to keep the game at 1-1. And then with three seconds left, Nico Heischer draws a penalty. The second period ends. Tied at one still, and we head to the third on the power play for a minute 57. We do absolutely nothing with it. Zero shots, and just another example of an atrocious power play for the New Jersey Devils. And, you know, it's gone hot and cold at points this season, and tonight it just was not... Did not look good there. Zero shots. And then at the 2-11 mark, the puck is dumped in deep. Nosik goes flying in on the forecheck. He strips the defenseman real quick, backhands it towards the front of the net, kind of dribbles off Soros. Tierney's there to bang it in, giving the Devils the 2-1 to -one lead at the 2-11 mark. And you love to see gritty goals like that. Um, I think a lot of us have said that, you know, we are a speedy transition team. And once 
teams make it hard for us to enter the zone. We can't really adapt and play any other type of game, which is true. But this was an example of one of those just, you know, grind it out type goals. Nosek goes in hard on the forecheck. The defenseman's nervous, and he strips him real quick and throws it right out in front. And there's Tierney waiting on the doorstep, puts it in. Love to see goals like that. That is a grinder-type goal. Hard work. Get your nose dirty. Get it on the forecheck, and good things happen. Great to see Tierney score that one there. His fourth of the season at 2-11, giving the Devils the 2-1 lead. Later in the period, the Devils on the penalty kill. And with one second on the penalty kill, Shimo Nemitz. Flips it over the glass for a delay of game. And I feel like we must lead the league in the delay of game penalty for pucks over the glass. I, mean, I just feel like there's been a million of them this season. So the Preds have a five on three for one second. Ball comes out of the box. It's now a five on four power play for Nashville. And they get a shot on net. A lot of traffic in front. The puck just sits there. And Evangelista just comes in. It's just sitting there. Guys all up in Allen's face, and he just rips it upstairs. Allen never saw it. Game tied at two. Nashville on the power play. 2-2, two -two, and that is how the game would, uh, not the game, the third period would end. 2-2, two -two, and at this point, you know, unfortunately the game doesn't mean much for us, right? But I'd like to see the team win. So we're heading into overtime. And it was pretty much back and forth pond hockey and over time. Some chances both ways. Um, I was very disappointed in one of Jack's, you know, getting back on D attempts. That he, a guy just kind of blew by him. It looked like he wasn't even trying. And then he eventually sped up at the very end to kind of mess with him as he's about to get the shot off. But he basically just watched the guy go in on a breakaway. And luckily he did enough to kind of alter the shot a little bit. And Allen made the save. Um, crazy overtime period. Luke Hughes takes a penalty with 30 seconds left. And at that point, I'm like, oh, boy, here we go. You know, 30 seconds left to to potentially have to kill off in the overtime. And Devils do a decent job. And then with seven around seven seconds left, Nosek grabs the puck, comes flying up. Brendan Smith comes flying up the other side, and they have a 2 on 0 And Nosek gets it over to Smith, and he gets a shot off. But it wasn't, like, a great shot. The pass was a little slow. Um, I think there I would have liked to see Nosek just fire the shot. Like, I know they had the 2 on 0 but the way the puck was kind of on edge, I think he should have just ripped it, but he tried to get it to Smith. Did not work out. It was actually enough time for the Preds to go back now the other way on a breakaway, and the I, I forget who the forward was. He was unaware of the time, and he didn't get the shot off in time. And, like, right as the buzzer went, he, like, took a shot. Um, and Nico, I think, like, pursued him to, like, say something to him. Like, buddy, what are you doing? And he kept I, – I, I read his lips. He was like, I didn't know. I didn't know, which I, I believe. I don't think it was a malicious thing. But nonetheless, you can't be firing pucks on the tendy after the, the buzzer goes off. But I really don't think he knew, um, you know, how much time was left on the clock. So we head to the shootout for the first time in forever. And uh, first up for the New Jersey Devils, Timo Meyer. He comes in. He kind of loses the puck for a second. He – Luckily, regathers it, and he, he takes a shot, and Sorrow saves it easily. Not a great shootout attempt for Timo Meyer, And then Nyquist comes in for the Preds. Super slow, winding back and forth. And Allen makes the save. I hate these kind of shootout attempts. I wish there was some kind of rule. I don't know how you would actually, you know, uh, like what the verbiage of the rule would be. But I hate when these guys come like at a at a snail's pace. I just think it's cheesy and corny, and, and I see feel like a lot of guys have employed this method of shootout attempts in the past couple of years. But I, I don't like it. But you know, nonetheless, Timo gets stoned, Nyquist gets stoned. Next up on deck for the New Jersey Devils, Jesper Bratt. Jesper Bratt comes in with kind of normal speed, does a few dekes, fires one low. Soros gets the pad on it, and we head to the next shooter for the Preds, O'Reilly. O'Reilly starts off his shot with normal speed, and then as he approaches Allen, he, like, slows down dramatically almost to a full stop and then goes five-hole and Allen gets the goal, first goal of the shootout, and then that leaves it on Jack Hughes to score to continue the shootout or with a save. The Preds will win. Jack comes in, denied by Soros. Nashville wins. Terrible loss for the Devils. Another, yet another blown lead in the third period. And, you know, it obviously has become a reoccurring theme for this New Jersey Devils club. Blown leads now. 
in a ton of games in just the past week and a half or so. You know, we blew that two-goal lead in Buffalo on the road. We blew the two-goal lead at home against the Pens. We blew a one-goal lead in the third period to the Rangers. And here tonight again at home blowing a one-goal third-period lead. And ha- had we won these games, and they were all ver- they were all right there for the taking, we would be in a playoff spot, not to mention all the other um, squandered chances by this New Jersey Devils club throughout the season. But that's what happens, you know. You- these things come back to haunt you. This is going to be one of those years, you know, that you, you say coulda, woulda, shoulda. A lot of things we didn't do to help ourselves earlier in the season, like losing, you know, at home to Anaheim and San Jose, and then losing to Anaheim, Anaheim on the road. Luckily, we beat San Jose, but you just look at that, right? We combined went one and three against Anaheim and San Jose. We got two points out of eight. Like, unacceptable. Completely unacceptable. But them's the breaks. Them's the breaks. The New Jersey Devils lose a terrible one, and we go to the game stats. 35 shots on goal for the Preds, 25 for the Devils. The Predators with the advantage in the faceoff department, 55.6 to the 44.4% for the Devils. Preds 1 for 4 on the power play. Devils 0 for 2 on the power play. The Preds with 17 hits, and the Devils with 12 hits. And while I'm on the topic of hits... Um, the last game, I believe Ottawa had 36 hits and during the video before I, you know, I didn't do the deep stat, uh, dive before I recorded the video. And I said, Brady Kachuk probably accounted for a third, a third of those, which would have been 12. He accounted for more than that. Brady Kachuk set an NHL record since they've been recording hits. Brady Kachuk against the devils last night, set an NHL record with 16 fucking hits in one game the devils just 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 wrap your mind around that last night in one game brady kachuk hit the devils 16 times the devils as a team tonight had 12 hits had 12 hits he had four more hits by himself as a one-man heat-seeking missile last night against this devils club than we did tonight uh, it's both an amazing stat for Brady and a pathetic stat for the New Jersey Devils. But uh, I've been high on Brady Kachuk. It may or may not be a pipe dream. I really hope Fitz tries to get him. But I've been mentioning it for at least a few weeks or a month or uh, however long it's been since those rumors first came out. I've said multiple times I would love him. He's exactly what we need. He's, he brings exactly what we're missing. And last night really solidified it for me. You saw a little bit of everything. He nearly got in a fight. He hit every single person on the team. 16 hits. He had that big goal for them. You could just see he's a leader. He's a leader and he's a winner, even though he's on a team that sucks right now. I think he could even take his game to new levels with better players on a better club. And I think he would fit in with the New Jersey Devils like a glove and inject exactly what we need in this lineup. Balls, snarl, grit, winner's mentality. He's an NHL pedigree. His father was an all-star borderline Hall of Famer, Keith Kachuk. Absolute legend. Um, if, for some of the younger people, if you don't know about him, look up Keith Kachuk. He was an absolute animal. The One of the quintessential power forwards, in my opinion, in the NHL of the 90s. Absolutely loved him. Would have loved to see him as a devil as well. But Fitz must at least inquire on Brady Kachuk. The kid is an absolute animal. Please and thank you. We go from hits to block shots. The Preds with nine block shots. The Devils with 16. Love to see the block shots. You know, that's another stat. I love hits and block shots. Those are... We want to win stats. So Devils with the edge there. Preds with five giveaways. Devils with 12 giveaways. And the Preds with 17 takeaways. And the Devils with 17 takeaways. The three stars of the game. And, you know, nothing too exciting for the Devils. The third star with the goal, Evangelista. The second star, Jake Allen. And the first star, Ryan O'Reilly with two assists. And it's a tough one. It's a tough one. It sucks to lose a game like this. It sucks when we're coming off uh, a nice win last night. But the reality is these games had no meaning for us. And, you know, we're playing with a lot of AHL-type guys in the lineup. And that's just – it's just one of those nights. Allen looked pretty good again. Um, Again – you know, I would love to see him in a true backup role for the Devils next season. My worry is that Fitzgerald doesn't do anything and we don't go big game hunting and get that bona fide number one goaltender. But I think, you know, you saw a glimpse, not that Soros had the greatest game ever, but he didn't play bad. He played pretty solid. 
and he came up huge in the shootout. And I do think, and especially um, in playoff games and things, when you have a money goalie like Soros, I just think the team feeds off of knowing they have a guy that could bail them out, that they have a difference maker, they have a guy that could steal a game. You know, Jake Allen has stepped up on multiple occasions this season and stole a couple games for us, in my opinion. But I just don't want to risk and bet on him doing that for, you know, a starter's load of games next season. I think he would be the perfect backup to a guy like Soros or Markstrom or whoever it may be. I just fear that he will be given the net when we fail to get a goalie. I hope I'm wrong. I would love to be wrong. I just have a sneaking suspicion that I am not. But, um, you know, another tough one for this Devils Club. And we're, we're down to the nitty-gritty here, folks. We are down to the nitty-gritty. We are down to our final four. Four games left on the season. Tuesday night, we host the Leafs. Thursday, at the Leafs. Saturday, at the Flyers, before we finally wrap up this hard season. Monday the 15th, at home against the Islanders. And, you know, what I'm looking forward to for the next two games, the home and away with the Leafs, is I hope that the Leafs play Ryan Reeves, and I hope that the New Jersey Devils play Curtis McDermott. Because, as you know, on this channel, on this channel, we love the fisticuffs. We love the fisticuffs, and that is a heavyweight battle I would like to see. I believe they've only fought once. I think it's once. Um, it was when Curtis McDermott was on the Avalanche, and I think Revo was on the Rangers. I'll put the link in the description. McDermott won the fight pretty decisively, but two absolute monsters that could throw him, and it would be beautiful if we got one bout in each game. I would love to see it. I hope I hope it lines up so we at least get one, one tilt between them out of the two games, but who knows with the rosters if McDermott and or Reeves will play in the same game. We've got all, that whole dynamic there. And maybe we see Curtis. I'd imagine Curtis will be in the lineup Saturday at the Flyers. We may see one with him and Delorier. That could be another interesting one. Some some tough, tough guys in the games ahead. We have nothing to play for, so I'm rooting for Curtis McDermott to break people's faces and for him to really put that pressure on Fitz to sign him up because not signing Curtis McDermott after this season would be an absolute crime. An absolute crime to be the latest thing for me to – Hate Fitzgerald for, honestly. But tough loss to the Devils. Let me know what you thought of the game in the comments. What do you think happened to our boy Capo Kakin and Annette? Did he get hit in the cack? Uh, are we going to see him again for the rest of the season? Um, anything else, Devils hockey? I would like to see some of the kids get starts. I would definitely would love to see Poulter get a start down the stretch. And I've been randomly mentioning I'd love to see Jeremy Brodeur get a start. Um, we have nothing to play for, so why, you know, what is the point of Allen playing? And I could see the point of Kakinen because I feel like he could be a guy we offer a two-way deal to or something of that nature. But if he's injured now um, and we have four games left, I would like at least one of them to be a Poulter start, which might be a pipe dream, and then one to be a Jeremy Brodeur start, which is probably even a bigger pipe dream. But, uh, you know, let the kids dream Let the kids dream come true. Let's see what he got. Throw him in there. That would be something fun for Devils fans to see, I'm sure. Who wouldn't want to see Jeremy Brodeur in net for the Devils? Uh, they should do it at home if they're going to do it. But, yeah, there's only two more games. Probably won't happen. I'd like to start a campaign. Um, that would be awesome if somehow that could become reality. But another tough one for the Devils. The season goes on. we got four games left. And that's it, guys. That is it. Making these videos after losses is somewhat painful and laboring. And this year has just been a, a kick in the nuts. It really has been a kick in the nuts. Talk to you all very soon. Throw it all out there in the comments, and that's it. That's all I got. Very disappointing. And uh, four games left. Hopefully we get some fireworks with Curtis McDermott. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. Until next time, friends, let's go Devils.